All right then, gang, so welcome to your very first Pinya tutorial. So then, first things first, what is Pinya? Well, Pinya is a state management solution for Vue.js applications. It allows us to create something called stores where we can define global application state, and that state can then be read from any component in the application. And when that state value changes inside the store, any component that uses that state will automatically get that updated value. For example, we might have a store for global authentication status of the user using the website, and any component in the application would be able to access that user state from the auth store. And that value would potentially switch between being a user object when that user is logged in and null when the user is logged out. So whenever that state change occurs in the authentication store, any component using that state will get the updated value right away. And this approach of having a store to hold global state that multiple components use makes more sense than defining it directly in components and passing it down as props because it's much less work this way, less complex and verbose, and also promotes a separation of concerns in your application, keeping your global state separate from your components. State inside stores can also be updated by the use of something called actions. And actions are just like functions that we can define inside a store and they can mutate the store state directly. Now these actions can then be called from inside our components as well so that we can update the state from wherever we need to. So that's the basics of what Pinya is. And if you've ever used something like Vuex before, you'll be thinking, mm, it's pretty similar to that, and it is. But there's a few advantages that Pinya does have over Vuex. Firstly, it's got a simpler API and it's much less verbose than Vuex. There's no such thing as mutations in Pinya stores like there is in Vuex. Pinya lets you change the state directly inside actions instead. Secondly, it's modular by design, meaning that for every different type of global state that you have, you would make a new Pinya store, which is just a JavaScript module. And this makes things more organized and modular by default than Vuex would be. Thirdly, it comes with TypeScript support and JavaScript auto-completion out of the box. And also, Pinya hooks right into Vue DevTools as well, meaning that if you're coming from Vuex, you're going to feel right at home with Pinya. So that's Pinya in a nutshell. And in this series, we'll be using it to make a small task manager application that looks something like this. So all of the state for these tasks right here are being managed by a Pinya store. And when we do things like add a new task or delete a task, or even add a task to your favorites, we're updating that store state using those action functions. We're also persisting those changes to a JSON file, which is storing the initial data for the application, so that when we refresh the page, those changes that we made to the state are being kept. So we'll be building this project out during this series, and you're going to learn all of the foundations and building blocks of Pinya along the way. How to make stores, how to access them in components, how to use actions to update the state, and how to use asynchronous code inside those actions as well. Now, normally when you need a state management solution like Pinya, your applications are gonna be a little bit more complex than this one right here. So for this particular case, it might be that you wouldn't need Pinya, but for the sake of learning and exploring how Pinya works, it's always best to start off simple. And then when you've got the foundations under your belt, you can venture onto more complex scenarios. And I will be making more Pinya tutorials in the future with more complex setups to manage things like authentication and site-wide data. But again, to learn the building blocks of Pinya, I think something more simple to begin with is the best approach. So in this course, you'll be learning Pinya from the ground up, how to install it, how to set up a store and access state from that store, as well as use actions to update it as well. And by the end of it, you're gonna be in a good place to start using it in your own applications. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.